Good morning guys, Diana here from Garden Love. So today I am at the Lopez Canyon Environmental Education Center here uh, right above Silmar. I'm really, really excited to be here because as I mentioned in my previous video, we're going to have some succulent classes and there's a lot going on. I'm going to give you guys a little uh, show what we're going to be learning today before we get started. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm excited to bring this to you guys. It's going to be amazing. And just before I go on, I want to let you know that next month, June 24th, I want to say I'll put the exact date and time and the date down below. There's going to be another class on Fairy Garden. Make sure to show up because I've heard it's amazing. And as you're going to see today, it's going to be great. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how they're setting up and what's going on. All right, let's get to it. All right, guys, now we're going to hear Cindy talk about seculins and propagation. She has some great information about where seculin comes from, how you can propagate them, what to expect, especially here in the West Coast. I'm in Southern California. She's going to talk to you about um, how to take care of them, mainly about um, seculins in containers. So that is great information coming your way. Stay tuned. Cindy's coming up. I'm also going to put her information down below. I hope that you guys find this informative and you enjoy this video, right? So let's go see Cindy now. Succulent from 50 years ago. Aloe. How about jade plant? Yeah, that's that. Okay, whenever I think of succulents, I think of jade plant. And everybody has a jade plant. You can let a jade plant die and water it and it comes right back, correct? You can break okay. a branch off and leave it alone Take a branch and, it keeps on and going. stick it in the ground. That was just laying on the ground. That's pretty much what started <laughs> the succulent trend. We went from jade plant to, look at all these little guys. By the way, where's Phil? Phil! This is Phil's. Phil every month brings me little goodies like this. and Everybody steals them, so today I'm going to give them. <laughs> See that? Now you got some cactus in here too. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, these are the succulents. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they're, all, they're all succulents. They're all succulents. Okay, in a couple minutes, after I talk a little bit about this, I'm going to turn it over to my expert. <laughs> I am going to give you some do's and don'ts, okay? Notice I had to bring references. It means I don't know a whole bunch about them. I'm learning though, isn't that what we're here for? Absolutely. Remember, I don't know everything. I know a lot about little things here and there, but I'm always willing to learn and hopefully I'll get information from you guys. So I'm gonna kind of read this and then elaborate on these things. One of our favorite houseplant variety succulents brighten up any room or patio. Number one, if you have them in the house, they're okay. But my suggestion, get two of the same plant. Put one outside and every two weeks alternate it, okay? That way you'll have a fresh succulent in your house all times. If you keep it in the house, they're not gonna do well. They need sunlight, they like fresh air. They like no water, but they do like to be watered. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. a well-trained soil, and then you don't, you want to let them completely dry out in between. Less water, more life. Okay? Well draining soil. I did bring <clears throat> a couple bags of cactus mix. So if you're doing succulents, you want to get a good cactus succulent. They also have it, it says for citrus and uh, palms. Okay? Why would they say palms? Same type of thing. Palm is technically a grass, but it needs, uh, they have little tiny roots, so it needs to be able to spread out. A lot of sand is in this too. So if you're gonna get the premium mulch here, and you're gonna try to use that for your succulents or your cactus, I would mix in some good mix like this and maybe a little extra sand. Be careful about adding sand into your soils. What happens if you have a clay soil and you add sand? It'll turn to brick, okay? That's what they make adobe houses with. So a lot of people, they think, oh my God, I got a clay soil, I'm gonna add sand. You're gonna do a lot of damage. So you do want a well-drained soil. You guys can come and take a picture of that. Also, here's a good example of our organic fertilizer. That OMRI stamp is on here, 
along with, uh, there's actually two companies that have um, certified organic this product. So if you guys come and take a look at it, that'll kind of show you what you want to buy as far as fertilizer at the at the uh, nursery. What nurseries do we go to? Green, Green Thumbs, yeah. Sago, where else? Armstrong's, Orchard. Sure, sorta. <laughs> I'm not hip on the big box. Why don't I like the box stores? They don't know anything. Right. I want you guys to go and get good product, but I also want you to get good information. You walk in and you go, oh my god, my uh, my succulents have mealy bugs. What are you gonna do? Uh, use? They're just gonna grab anything. They have no clue. <laughs> and then you're gonna probably burn your plant, or the chemical won't work, and it's probably gonna cost you 20 bucks. Remember, I don't like to spend money, do I? Plus the right. plant. <laughs> All right. Sun, sun, sun. Lots of sun, but they will take some shade. Right, Sandy? Absolutely. All right. Plant food. I think very important plant food is necessary. Now, everything that I've been taught or that I've been reading about, they always talk about using a liquid fertilizer. I'm going to go on a different tangent and give you my own opinion. I would rather see you use a slow-release fertilizer on your... Thanks. And any of your organics, your dry form of organics, break down very slowly if you want to do an organic uh, succulent garden. Osmocote, as far as uh, um, synthetics, is really good because it breaks down so slow. Succulents don't grow very fast, do they? Okay. So really, a slow-released fertilizer is really good. Fresh air. Did I say that? Alternate your plants from inside to outside. They like fresh air. They like sun. And then probably the worst insect on them is your mealybugs okay that's probably number one problem on a succulent now you could take a little bit of alcohol wipe them off i personally would just take if they're a small plant i would just take a, a, a towel or something and wipe them off that's probably the easiest way to do it but mealybugs are going to be your biggest problem all right now what we're going to do is two what time we got and good, we still got lots of time. Cool. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. You know why? You know why she came up and did that? Because her mother doesn't know how to use her phone. <laughs> These kids know way, way more than we do, don't they? Okay. Um, water's up here, so Sandy's going to take over, and she's going to talk about propagating, and then her daughter's going to come up and talk about the fairy gardens, how to make a fairy garden. What I've got for you guys is everybody's going to take a tray of succulents home, okay? And you're gonna have to go get your own little peoples, okay? You go to the 99 cent store. And then we also have strawberries. Um, oh, you like this. Check it out. That's cute. And you know what? I'm happy to announce this is my idea. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Or what, did you get it? Okay, so she was the one that got it because, believe me, your top bosses had no clue. You know? I went to the top to get these. I, mean, I don't know. All right, so she got it. So everybody's going to get one of these and then they're going to be able to plant a four inch succulent. Isn't that cool? But I want you to plant it here and kind of show me how we're going to have just a major cluster, you know what, here have at the end. So you're going to get strawberries, you're going to get fruits, vegetables, you're going to be able to make your own fairy garden. And then everybody's going to come in. And I also have pink ones. Right there. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a couple more things. Don't forget, if you need a book, this is the only book I'd recommend to do everything. This will take care of all your needs, from herbs to succulents to roses, tomatoes. It's geared towards the Western United States. If you're online and doing research, be very careful because most of the research is done back east and you'll do more damage than good. Okay, we won't get into the whys or hows, but again, that's it. So, we will have more time for questions, so think about that. You know what this is? Alright, we're going to put a succulent garden in here. Now, here's the bag part. This is eucalyptus. So, I'm not sure how well they'll do, okay? Remember, eucalyptus leaves are probably one of the only things you really don't want to put into your compost. They will 
break down, but it takes a lot longer. There's an oil in this. So we're going to go ahead and plant this up and just see what happens. Worst case scenario, they'll die, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to talk about grass a little bit too. Mm -hmm. yeah. What zone are we? Zone 9? Yeah. Nine. 9 to 10, yeah. The book's on 25 bucks, 30 bucks probably now. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, Diane. I'm right here. You can pick a mulch at any time. Oh, what? Well, this is available. 24 hours. Well, the gate is open until... The gate is open, I think, until the public store. Five. Until five, the gate is open. Five? But what time do they open? Six to five, except Sundays. Right? Oh, seven days a week? Even holidays? Oh, if, if, if you have material, so there you go, it's all the time. Yeah, that's good to know. So, um, with that being said, so far so good. She's going to give you uh, a little lesson on propagating succulents. Do you have a loud voice like me? My name is Sandy Chase, and um, I've been in the Cactus and Succulent Society for about 40 plus years. Um, actually, they do have clubs here in Southern California that deal with nothing but cactus and succulents. Um, Steve was talking about succulents mostly for in the ground. I'm going to talk about putting things in pots and propagating. Do any, does, do any of you have cactus or succulents in containers, in pots? All right, so lots of you do. Great. Um, he talked about his mix, which I love this stuff here, but I add extra pumice when they're in a pot. Pumice is sort of like perlite. It's inorganic, but it doesn't float, where your perlite up and out of the pot, and you got the white balls all over everything. <laughs> so uh, just a little background. All cactus are succulent, but not all succulents are cactus. So a succulent or a cactus, either one, something about that plant stores water. So in a broad sense, sweet potatoes and potatoes store moisture in their tubers. So way out here technically you could call them succulents <laughs> um he steve asked me not to bring cactus because he said there would be kids and then they would get poked but i want to show you so she brought them anyhow I did. <laughs> because this oh, is a cactus so look at that yeah, yeah, some cactus you can touch and they won't hurt you yeah. so. This is a cactus. You can touch it and it won't hurt you. This is a succulent, and so is this, and both of these will hurt you. <laughs> so just, you know, not all cactus have spines, and not all succulents are soft-bodied that don't have some sort of protection. And a lot of these things, they grow in places like um, Africa, and there's a lot of animals that like to eat them. So this is the spines on these things are basically protection from predators, from herbivores. Um, back in the back, there's some uh, flats. There's two flats somewhere over there in the corner. They're little two inch pots, um, two and a half inch pots. And they're a better size for a succulent garden like this size here than would be the four inch which would be way out of uh it, it would look funny to have that great big plant in a in a fairy garden so but there's a few of them in there that will look like this when it gets full grown um there are some cactus and succulents that are so rare that they just it takes them 20 30 years before they get flowers so what they've done now, and this is almost all over in Japan, is they've taken just one tubercle off of this, a plant like this, and grafted it onto a stock plant, and it 
that's taking its nutrients out of the stock, so it's growing very, very quickly. So if you, there's probably hundreds on here. So they sit and cut each one off and put it onto a stock plant. And within a year, you can have a plant that's this size and it will flower faster. <clears throat> the possibilities with cactus and succulents are absolutely endless. They just, there's just so many different kinds. Um, so we were gonna do a little bit on <coughs> propagating. This is called an agave lipstick. And what we do at the, I also volunteer at the Huntington Library one day a week. You can take, this is an etch of area called lipstick. It's a cultivar, meaning we made this to have this little red edge. You can pull these off and you can let them lay in a flat or in somewhere where it's uh, shady and it will actually start to throw little hair roots along the edge. And then you plant that. <clears throat> this was one right here, it's almost gone now, but you can plant that down in there. And you have, you within just a few months, you'll have a small plant that looks like this. Just from, and there's, like the plants that he has back here, the four inch, at Javarius you can do that with, the graptopetalums, the, um, many of the succulents that are back here, you can take a leaf off, lay that leaf in a shady area, you can <coughs> just lay it down in a flat in a shady area for a week or two, and you'll see little tiny hairs start to come on here, little roots, stick it in your mix, and you can start new plants that way. Do you water it all? Um, Soil yes. Soil damp or? Yes, yes, you would water it like you would your regular plant and in the summer for me it would be like once a week if it gets 100 degrees I back down to like five or six days four days you have to kind of watch your temperature because in pots like uh, Steve was saying these things if I put this out in the Sun and it's 90 degrees this pot is going to absorb that heat mm -hmm. and it's gonna it's too, almost too hot for me to touch in the afternoon so that moisture is just absolutely going out of that pot. So you need to watch that. A really good idea, this is a mechanical pencil, but if you take for moisture for pot plants and you get a regular number two wood pencil and you sharpen <coughs> it, you take your, your pencil and you stick it down into the pot like this and when you pull it out, if there's a little bit of the uh, organic matter that's still atta uh, you know attached to this don't water it if it's bone dry it's time to water that plant another little trick is and it's and it's super cheap and all and it works every bit as well as all those moisture meters that you go buy in the store Let's see if I can get these out of here this is a Hoya and these were just cuttings, all right? Be that way. <laughs> these I call my little mini greenhouses, and I just take a cutting off of a Hoya. Oh, this is great, I love this. What's happened here? <laughs> Which I didn't even expect. The reason I couldn't get it out is, do you see the roots oh. from one plant has gone down into the, the soil of the, of the other plant, or the other pot? So I take cuttings and I put them in these and then I put them in the baggie, I put about a tablespoon of water and I zip that closed. I put it in a shady area and within a few weeks it comes up, it gives leaves. Now I'll be able to take this out and pot it up in a hanging plant. A hanging pot which you can put under the eaves of your house um, not all succulents like full sun some of them will burn really bad so you have to kind of know your plant <clears throat> but then you can hang this up it's a Hoya. yeah it's a Hoya here's another way to start <clears throat> some of them they won't all start this way this is called Hoya multiflora and this is the, what the flowers look like. It's a very easy, easy 
Easy Hoya for a house plant or under the eaves or under hanging in a patio. <laughs> You take a cutting and you need to have a node, which is a node is where a leaf is. So you pull the leaves off here, and as long as it has a node and you put it in a, a glass of water, this has only been in there, I would say, about two weeks, three weeks maybe. And then from here, you can take this out and pot it up. You need to keep it fairly moist for the first couple of weeks because these are water roots and it has to acclimate into the potting mix that you put it in. Um, okay, this is a Haworthia, and it's pretty ratty looking. So I'm just gonna start pulling this apart. You can do this with almost all of your succulents. Some of them will not start by leaves, but they throw little pups out. So like this, you can just break <coughs> this off. It doesn't even, it has a little root attached to it. You take your potting soil. You put that in there like that. Now for potted plants, but you, it's the same thing as using a mulch out in your yard. I use a top dressing. Not only does it make it look nice, but it holds the plant up. It holds the moisture in the pot longer. And this will become a big cluster of plants. Um, most Haworthias will do that. Some, some stay solitary. What else? Sandy? Pardon? What do you use? Okay, good old Arroyo builders down on Arroyo in San Fernando. You can go in there and they have little baby food jars and jars of different types of rock, crushed rock. This is called, I happen to like this because I, I put my plants in shows for ribbons and for trophies. But this one is called Arkansas Razorback Red. But you can get it from pure white to pure black, and if you remember, black is going to absorb even more mm -hmm. heat. And uh, this is a decomposed granite on this one. You can come up and look at these later. Uh, you can get every color and every size. They go from the little, little like this, to good size, depending on the size of your pot and the plant that you put in there. What's it called again? Pardon? Arkansas what? Arkansas Razorback, Razorback Red. Red. Sandy? Yes. Let me ask you about the pups. I've tried to take them off before and they die. Okay, which, <coughs> what kind of plant? It's very similar to what you had uh, like yeah. that. This one? Right. Like a horthia. Right. Uh, did it have, even if it didn't have roots, it should have rooted for you. Okay. These horthias tend to like spring and fall and they tend to go a little bit dormant and quit growing during our hottest months and our coldest months. So make sure you do like springtime or fall because they're not actively growing in winter or in our dead of our dead heat of summer. But this is this shows a really good and if they're kind of brown or they're too long you can just either use I use my fingers, my nail but you can use little um, scissors, cutters, trim your roots back, take off any dead ones along the side <coughs> till it looks decent, pot it up. On this, if you do cut the roots, you wanna wait a week or so, even though you've potted it, wait a week or so for the cut edge to callus over. Otherwise, you're gonna bring up the water and it's going to, sometimes it'll have fungus in it or something and it'll rot. So that may be too. So let it, let it callous before you water. The biggest thing with succulents is if you're in doubt about watering, don't. Because they really, truly come from places that may only get five or six inches of rain a year. Some of them don't get rain for years, literally years, up in Namibia and some of the places in Africa.
but they get a fog that rolls in <coughs> every morning and that condenses on the plant, runs down the, the, the stock and down into the roots. So again, with succulents, even the ones in your yard, if you aren't quite sure, wait a few days because more succulents are rotted with too much water than any other reason for, for death on those. Questions? What do you put in the mix? The mix. <coughs> My mix is, actually this mix right here is about a 50-50 mix with pumice and, not that, the premium mix that I got from Hey Ray. <laughs> and uh, I really like it. My plants seem to like it, but I'm not fertilizing as much as I would normally because that you told me that had some steer manure in it. The premium mix does. <clears throat> so as the steer manure breaks down, it's going to give nutrients to these plants and I don't need to fertilize as often. And fertilizing potted plants compared to the ones outside is if no matter what fertilizer you use, do it about half strength. If it says a tablespoon to a gallon, use only half of that amount and fertilize with every Which one? Your last comment about potted plants. Oh, potted plants and fertilizer. Only <coughs> use it the fertilizer half strength instead of full strength. And uh, feed them with every watering from like, well now, early spring all the way through. Here sometimes we can even get by with doing, still fertilizing in October, November because our weather stays good. You have to kind of watch the night temperatures with these guys. Um, when it comes, when it's above 60 degrees, they're in absolute active growth. And we haven't even hit that yet. Most of our nights have been hitting like mid 50s or high 50s, but not 60 yet. That might make a difference on the <coughs> tomato blossoms because they have to be a, between a certain temperature in order to set fruit. So if it isn't warm enough, or if it's too hot, or too cold, it, they don't set fruit. So it isn't anything you're doing, it's just our temperature. Any other questions? Um, I've made lots of cuttings from the daffodils. Yes. Okay, lots of plants. The crops get filled. Do they, I mean, they look fine, but do they need Yeah, they all fall apart. Um, that's a real tough one. I, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the donkey tails, which have the little round, and if you just look at them cockeyed, those, the little leaves just fall off. Um, you could break the pot, or you could start over by just taking all of those, pulling them out, and whatever falls off, let them, let them fall off, and rerooting so many of them in a new pot. Well, we tip them on their side uh -huh. and we tap the bottom of the pot with a mallet and try to just slowly bring that out of there. But when you break that up, you're going to lose a lot of the balls. If it's still, if it's got all of its leaves, yeah, they look then I wouldn't mess with it. When they are running out of, of food, they're going to start losing the, the, the leaves, the little round parts up at the top, and they'll be all just the stems with nothing on them. And then you'll see the leaves on the ones with parts hanging down. That's when you can take each one, clip it, start it in anew, and then just make a new pot. And I was going to, oh, go ahead. I understand the clumpy kind of succulents. You can pull the leaf off and right. get that started that way. Are there any succulents that you can propagate by cuttings, like the taller ones that have like tall vertical stems? Cut um, it off? Absolutely. And, and any, you can always do you those by cuttings? It, you can try it with almost anything. Just make sure that you callus that cut off well before you pot it up. Okay. I was gonna, this is a cactus I know, but I know some of you probably have these. I was going to show you on this one. 
this hurts. <laughs> Take my word for it. <laughs> and it desperately needs repotting. Yeah. So my favorite thing is plain old vinyl gloves, the kind the doctors use, whatever <laughs> they're called, is one way. You, I probably could hold this with that. Folded up newspaper. Take this, wrap it around this plant. Let's open it up. I need a little more space here. I have a sleeve. Okay. This has a nice, I pull some of these, a few of these roots off to encourage it to make some new ones. If you use ceramic pots, any pot, you want to always make sure that there's a drainage hole. Because if it stays <coughs> wet all the time, that, that succulent or cactus is going to eventually rot. So I put a little bit of mix in here. I sit him down in here like this. And don't be afraid of your plants. Play with your plants. They're fun. <laughs> He needs a little adjusting here, so we get him in the middle of the pot. We have all these cute little see the dental tools. <laughs> the tools will pick out all of the stuff without you getting hurt. It's also great for mealybugs. You can get in there and just, like if you only have a few, you just scrape them right out and through those spines. So we're just gonna play this a little bit here. like the same plant? Yeah. <laughs> and then one other, this is a, another succulent. I'm making a big mess here. Oh, I'll put it in here. This is a Sansevieria, like the ones that you buy in the grocery store that have the flat leaves. There's probably a hundred or more different varieties of Sansevieria. This one is uh, cylindrica, which means it just stays round. Uh, some of them are miniature and are small that you can put in your house. These will grow outside in a shady area in the in the wild where they come from. They're usually under what's called a nurse plant or a, a tree so it gets dappled shade. These grow by something called stolons or I guess for a better word tubers. So when you get something like this, this plant has sent out a new one over here. You can just take this. <laughs> Cutting would probably be better. <laughs> That's not a moringa plant, is it? No. Or the fruit? What does it look like? The what? Moringa? No. The fruit. Yes, that's another word, the snake. It's another word for it. Snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was uh, different. No. Sansevieria. Okay. 
little because they have like little sharp tongues. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a little wilted. Yes, that's right. Like, who said it looked like moringa? Kind of like that, but hanged up. But a moringa tree is huge. Yeah. So anyway, then you just this one you don't even have to wait on. You can just plant that in a new pot right now. Wait for a little bit because I just cut on here. Any other questions? Yes. You know, sometimes you get these dips where they have like bonsais and cactus and succulents. How much water did you put in one of those? I, I know it depends on the, on the size of the container, but how do you determine how much water to put in it before you kill it? Did you hear me say talk about yeah, the pencil? Yeah, the pencil. But then after that, I mean, you put the pencil in and then you put water in. If, if you put the pencil in and you get some of the organic, the little dark matter sticks to the wood, yeah. it has enough moisture if it comes out totally clean with nothing sticking to yeah. it time to water but how much water do you add for me i like to water plants thoroughly it's the same as putting your water down around the plant and letting it drip in water it so that the water comes out the bottom of the holes mm -hmm. so the container itself should have drainage holes it right? must have and drainage if it doesn't holes. then you need to put some yes and they do have ceramic grills for concrete that if you're really careful, I can't tell you how many pots, ceramic, good ceramic pots I have broken by trying to put a hole in it. But if you set it over like a four by four or a two by four and drill slowly and add water as you as you do it, you can get a hole in there sometimes. <laughs> yes, right. Any other questions? Let's go to something else. All right, guys, now that we've heard Steve and Cindy talk about um, all the gardening answers and questions that everybody had and also about the succulents, please stay tuned. I'm going to be posting an announcement about a week before their next show. Um, and I hope that you guys can come out here. It'll be a great way for me to meet you guys and have an opportunity to talk and chat and then um, learn some new things. Um, I'm not sure. I thought next week that we're going to be doing some um, succulent gardening, um, fairy gardening. So if you guys are interested in that, please stay tuned. I'm going to double check though. I'm going to make sure what the next class is for. I'll be announcing it a week before the class and I'll be putting it in the descriptions down below. All right, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me some thumbs up. If you're a newcomer, subscribe because I'm going to be bringing some more information like this from other people who love gardening as much as you and I do. And hopefully it helps you in the garden. And um, that's it, guys. I hope you guys have a blessed day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.